Hey guys, it's Piet Levy, music writer for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel at tapmilwaukee.com, and we're at the end of Summerfest. I'm surrounded by our Summerfest writing team. We've got Eric Ernst, John Gilbertson, and Cal Roach, and we're going to talk about uh, the best and worst of the second half and the best of the big gig overall. John, we'll start with you. What was, what's was what been a highlight for the second half of Summerfest and a, and a low point? Strangely enough, my uh, highlight and low light both came uh, after we taped the first one of these on that Sunday. Okay. My highlight was Amanda Shires, okay. uh, wonderful sort of country rock folk all that singer fantastic uh, she was there with her husband Jason Isbell formerly of drive-by truckers and now a uh, very good solo singer songwriter himself playing a support role and also probably also because uh, his wife appeared to be four or five months pregnant and you know yeah that, that's a very good reason to you know be be close by on the tour my worst later on was uh, Paris Hilton okay doing a DJ set uh, the thing was is that that actually wasn't not exactly a high praise here, but it wasn't all that bad. I mean, <laughs> okay. I mean, it was mostly twiddling knobs and pushing buttons, but frankly, I mean, it was probably about 10 years behind whatever trends there are in EDM right now, but it was, it was a solid set, and if nothing else, she actually seemed to be enjoying herself, which for me was bewildering because I don't think I've ever seen her do any sort of genuine smile before. <laughs> and now, Eric, you saw a little bit of the Paris Hilton set. What did you think of that one? I, I think she did the job that they wanted her to do. She showed up, there was a big crowd, and they actually stayed. Like, if yeah. it was a train wreck, they would have left 10 minutes in. The sure. crowd was still big an hour and a half later. That, there you go. Yeah. Well, what, what have been the hits for you? What have been, like, the highlights for the second half? Yeah, I only have highlights, really, from the second half. No uh, no lowlifes. Okay. I left my lowlifes with Big Smo in the first half. So okay. my highlights really were the uh, the Rhyme Sayer stage again this year. Um, I caught ASAP Rock and Dilated Peoples, and they were fantastic in the early set. Uh, my other highlight, I know I've uh, taken a lot of crap from a lot of friends over the years for uh, defending Kelly Pickler, but that's because people think of her only as the reality star, American Idol dancing with yeah. the stars. But if you actually dig into her music, she, she's been surprisingly one of the uh, most genuine country voices the last two years. Cool. Well, Cal, what about for you? What's, what was like a highlight for the second half of Summerfest? Well, I have to say, uh, you know, initially I was definitely disappointed with Kendrick Lamar because okay. of, uh, you know, I had a similar reaction to you, I actually was short and he, he didn't really go all out with the, the, the oeuvre of the new album, but when I thought about it more, it was like, you know, those songs are so good. Every one of the songs that he played was so good. And the energy was huge, the crowd was so into it. I mean, I guess it left me with a l more long-lasting impression than I anticipated. I think for me, like, I didn't have any major, besides Kendrick Lamar, that was a big disappointment for me. But uh, there was some really great stuff in the amphitheater. Um, Carrie Underwood was there on Thursday and just did a fantastic job. And another show that really blew me away was Ed Sheeran at the amphitheater, which was the only show besides the Stones that sold out. And uh, what's amazing is that guy plays just by himself. He does some looping techniques. He doesn't have any sort of band. His production is really pretty low key. And he had the crowd the whole time. He's, I mean, to do that, to pull it off is really cool. Um, so ultimately, bottom line, guys, what has been the best for Summerfest 2015? What is the one show uh, that really stands out to you as the greatest one? We'll start with you, John. Well, no contest. The one I mentioned last week, Mavis Staples. Awesome. And Eric, what's been your favorite the whole fest? I, I always uh, enjoy that a lot of the Summerfest side stage headliners are folks that are on bigger tours the rest of the uh, rest of the year, and so they really get to let loose and do a full headlining show that they don't get to do the rest of the summer. One of those folks was Kip Moore, and he took full advantage of it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and Cal, what about for you? What's been the, the best part of Summerfest this year? I have to say the most impressive thing to me was the uh, Webster X yeah. set opening up for Lupe Fiat. Fiasco. Okay. Um, he brought in kind of like his whole crew, this new age narcissism group that's uh, really becoming this major force in local hip hop. And uh, as a performer, he himself is just a lightning rod. He's just jumping all over the place. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And, and you know, he definitely deserved that. He's such a really good live performer. And it's great to see that, that really good local music gets good slots like that. So it's great to hear that he pulled it off. Uh, and, and for me, you know, honestly, uh, there's been so many good there's some, been so many good shows, but it, it's really hard to kind of peak and top the, the very first night, the very first band with the Rolling Stones uh, playing a kickoff concert at the Marcus Amphitheater, by far the smallest venue on this tour. And when I think back at it, I mean, I just keep thinking about that show. They, they definitely brought it. That's a show that I'll never forget. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, checking in and following all our coverage. You can find a lot more at jsonline.com/summerfest, and we'll all see you next year. All right, thanks, guys.